Number 18, the initial concentrations or pressures of reactants and products are given for each of the following systems. Calculate the reaction quotient and determine the direction in which each system will proceed to reach equilibrium. Then we have letter A. So I have a balanced equation. I'm going to write it out, right? I see that it has coefficients already. There's two and three. So I'm going to assume it's balanced, but you could always pause the video. And I'm just going to write out what we got here. So we got two NH3 gases, which will come to equilibrium. There's a double arrow with N2 gas plus three H2 gas. Okie dokie. The next thing is I like just, just to keep everything organized. So they gave me concentration values. Concentrations are, remember, molarities. So I'm just going to write down what I got. So they told me I had 0.5 for NH3. So I'm just going to say that I got 0 0.50 molarity here. And then for N2, they told me I had 0.15 molarity. And then for H2, I got 0 0.12 molarity. So there you go. All right. So I have numbers for both sides, right? Since I have concentrations for both sides, I don't know which one of these is going to be the predominant, you know, way of proceeding. Are we going to go from reactant to product or are we going to go from product to reactant? Well, we got to first find out the reaction quotient. And re remember, the reaction quotient is the Q value. So I wrote down the formula here. We've done tons of problems figuring out how to write these expressions, right? So let's just get started. Let's find out the QC. And I say C because it just matches the K value. So since they gave us a KC, C stands for concentration. They gave us molarities. So it kind of all works out. Now remember. Only aqueous and gases are allowed in this formula. So just check those states. But we seem good. Gas, gas, and gas. So everything's included here. Let's do products divided by reactants. And then you're going to raise them to the coefficients, right? COEF is coefficient. So I'll just work from left to right for the product side. So bracket, because we're talking about molarities. N2. I don't see a number in front of the N2. Remember, that means that there's only one of them. So you can put a one here, but you don't have to. And then it's being multiplied with this formula. It's multiplication by H2. And now in this case, I do see a coefficient. So I have to raise it to the third. That's what those coefficients are used for. Now we're going to do the product side. Uh, sorry, the reactant side. That goes on the bottom. So NH3, close them up. I do see a coefficient. It's a 2, so I have to square it. Now, let's just plug in the numbers. Pretty simple, right? So let's see. N2 was 0 0.15, and that's going to be times by the H2, which is 0 0.12, and that has to be raised to the third. I mean, maybe that looks good. And then the bottom, we're just going to times this by 0 0.50. And then that has to be squared. So QC equals something over something else. Let's see, what's the top number? 0.12 squared times 0.15. So I get 0 0.15. 00216 and then 0.5 squared is 0.25. So now when I just divide these two together, let's see, this divided by 0.25, I get a pretty small number 0 If we care about sig figs, there's only two sig figs in all of these choices. So I'm just going to get rid of the four. All right. But for me, I mean, I don't care. I would have kept the four there. But, you know, for sig fig purposes, because, you know, some, some teachers or professors still care at this point. But, I mean, honestly, who cares? <laughs> but, yeah, there you go. Okay, so that's the first part. 
Now we have to de determine the direction. Now there's a little trick here, guys. When you're figuring out what direction are you gonna go, are you gonna go the forward reaction or the reverse reaction, always put the Q on the right-hand side and the K on the left-hand side. A lot of textbooks have it the other way around, but this way you get the trick. So I got a Q of 0 0.0086 and a K they told me was seven, 17. Make the relationship. Is it gonna be greater than, less than, or equal to? Well, 17 is way bigger than 0 0.0086, so the K has to be greater than the Q. Now here's the trick. You see this? Treat this as an arrowhead. Pull the arrowhead back. And look at that, guys. You have the direction. You're going in the forward direction. You're going this way. So to answer the question, you're going to either shift to the right, proceed to the right, and that's it. But if you want the idea behind it, we're down over here. Whenever your K is greater than your Q, you have more reactants than you need. This is too high of a number. I mean, kind of look at it, right? It's 0.5 as opposed to 0.15 or 0.12. So you need to get rid of these and increase this. That's why you would go from left to right. But either way, there you go. So hopefully this helped. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. Hope you're doing well out there. All right, keep studying hard and let's crush our exams coming up. I will talk to you all in later lessons. Bye-bye.